Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. Chris Diamantopoulos, million dollar question. Mm. How many people mispronounce your last name oh, on a daily it's, basis? It's, <laughs> it's, it's a, probably about a million, uh, yeah. I, I, the name is not, it's it's not as challenging as it would seem. It's phonetically sound, Diamantopoulos. But it's, it's, uh, it's daunting to look at it, but it is the Smith of Greece. Uh, I love there it. There are many Diamantopoli walking around Greece that don't understand why Americans find it so challenging to say the name. For those who cannot say it is Diamantopolis. That's it. Yeah, that's Super it. easy. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, you know, I could have probably shortened it years ago, but I love my father and my lineage too much. So, You've got two great projects right now. You and I were just talking. Yeah. Silicon Valley is back. That is one of my favorite shows. Coming you, back on Sunday, yeah. You are my favorite character. Mm. Your speeches, Russ's speeches in Silicon Valley are pure gold, so congrats. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but Certainly. you're joining one of the best shows on Broadway first, Waitress, you and Sarah Burrell. It's got to be exciting, right? I, I'm still pinching myself, to be honest with you. And, and yeah, I mean, I would say the best show on Broadway, particularly now that Sarah's in the show, it is, it's such a special piece. And... Uh, it's just this, um, this is one of those once in a lifetime things I think that, that, that happened where Sarah wrote the music and lyrics to this beautiful show and is now stepping into the lead role and is just dynamite. And you know, she's never acted before and you wouldn't know it. It's like she's been working on Broadway for the past 10 years. She's one of those people that you almost dislike because of how talented no, she no, is. No, 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 no. Because you're so, like, I'll say like, don't be so talented, Sarah. You, you actually don't. She, she surpasses the dislike and gets you right back to she's loving Because she is the nicest person she in is, real life. She really is. I mean, I wish I had some dish. Um, <laughs> she's, she's truly kind. She's, I mean, the company just absolutely adores her. And um, she's, she's just this well of talent. And, uh, and joy and positivity. She's terrific. This show has been such an enormous hit. Why do you think it is connected with audiences the way that it has? I mean, I think uh, it's pretty simple. Um, so aside from the fact that the key players involved uh, are all of the highest quality, Diane Paulus, who directed, Jesse Nelson, who wrote the book, and Sarah Bareilles, who uh, wrote the music and lyrics, and then the Weisslers producing. Aside from that, uh, the show taps into two things that people really enjoy doing and need to do, which is cry and laugh. And and I think that it's a human story. Um, it's something that everyone can relate to. The subject matter is relatively ethically gray, uh, given that there are affairs happening. Um, but I think ultimately it just boils down to this, this story that everybody can put themselves uh, into the shoes of and beautiful moving music um, tied together with some hilarious uh, comedy and, and physical comedy. You've been having so much success with TV. I was just, we were just saying, I interviewed you for Good Girls, Good Girls Revolved, uh -huh, right. your Silicon Valley. When do you decide, let me get into theater, let me get back in Broadway here you for know, a second. Um, I'd love to say that, that it's always sort of um, premeditated decision based, but it's, uh, you know, early in my career, and certainly still now to a large degree, <laughs> you take what, what opportunity comes to you. I made a concerted decision to stop working on stage about 15 years ago because I really wanted to try my hand at television and film. And it seemed like every time I tried to do it, I would book a, a theatrical show, which takes up a great deal of your time. And so I, I sort of quit theater cold turkey, as it were, and moved out to L.A. and was quite miserable for a while until I started working a little more regularly. And uh, before I knew it, but more than a decade had passed, and I really missed being on stage. And so this, well, this was one time where there was a break in my TV schedule, and fortuitously enough, this, uh, this you know, magic thing happened where uh, Jesse Mueller was leaving the show, and Sarah Bareilles took over, and, and they wanted me to come and do it for, for these, um, this short stint, and I jumped at the opportunity. Every actor I talk to says the same thing. There's nothing like theater. There really isn't. It, is it that... Rich in experience? You know, it's, uh, I, I think it just, it ignites every synapse and nerve in your body. And you have to be present or face the consequences, you know? There are, you know, a thousand or twelve hundred or fifteen hundred people watching you and listening to you. And so you hold for two and a half hours the responsibility of, of, communicating to them and communing with them really because every show and Sarah and I were just talking about this the other day every show is totally different despite the fact that we're doing essentially the same thing the audiences even their their breaths in when they're absorbing what's happening it can shift the scene ever so slightly do you feel that I've always wondered when you're on that stage 
do you feel the audience? You feel the energy? Do you hear the breathing? Is it is it with you? There are there are times in the show where you're so connected to the moment that um, the audience really does fade into the background. But maybe this makes me a bad actor. I have, <laughs> no, I have an awareness of the audience. I have an awareness of you know uh, if they're boisterous and are expressing themselves you know vocally, or if they're so engaged that they're silent. You know, sometimes silence isn't the worst thing after a joke or, or after a song. Sometimes it's just the audience absorbing it. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we didn't have a bad yeah, show today, right. I they promise. They were just absorbing, yeah. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. What a, what a brilliant show. It really is. There's nothing like it on TV. I mean, there's shows that mimic other stories that can be replicated, but there's nothing like Silicon well, Valley. What they've done, I think, what Mike Judge and Alec Berg and HBO have done is they've managed to take something mundane that popular culture would normally not necessarily be interested in, and they've managed to make it personable and hilarious. And the way that they've done it is they've crafted these, these brilliant stories and then they've put together this cast of characters that's comprised of such talented individuals and I was lucky enough to be thrown in the mix and uh, they entrusted me with possibly the worst human being <laughs> ever It's amazing. Yeah. For those who have not seen Silicon Valley, you play a billionaire named Russ Hanneman mm -hmm. who is the most superficial, mm -hmm. egotistical, narcissistic, I mean you, I can pull 30 words out of the dictionary that are negative that will descri describe Russ, you right? Know the, the real shame of it is that they say that you in television, you're hired to play yourself. So, <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think that I've made a career of playing anything but myself because I, I'm a character actor, but, um, you know, there's something so lovably detestable about Russ Hanneman. He is so fully absorbed in his own hubris that he doesn't see anything else. And I guess one of the reasons the character probably has resonated with people is there's probably a speck uh, in everyone that they wish that they could just kind of... There's a little right. Russ in everybody. Yeah, you know? Why not? Wouldn't it be great to be able to be like Russ? Those a monologues moment. that you deliver, there's, there's when ones. you and I were talking about it, I, when you get those scripts, do you read through this and you're like, this is so absolutely bonkers that I can't believe I get to say this stuff on television? I mean, look, I've been fortunate enough. It, it, television in general doesn't often allow for broad performance. You know, it's, it's, it's typically, even in comedy, it's typically reined in and I love to perform and I love to go there and sort of chew the scenery so I've been really lucky with episodes and with Silicon Valley uh, I've, I've had uh, certain TV opportunities to really go there so when I get the Silicon Valley scripts there's one of those monologues in this upcoming season that just when I thought they couldn't make it any more <laughs> reprehensible they, he goes they there. wipe the slate clean and and, and, and they really did, yeah. How much of fun is it playing a bad guy like him? Because you seem like a super nice and humble guy. How much fun is it going to the dark side? It's great. I mean, look, I, I have a lot to draw from having worked in, in the entertainment business for almost 30 years now. So I've seen a lot of bad guys out there, <laughs> and it's, it's fun to pull some of the absurdity that I've actually lived in my life. When you look at Waitress, when people get to see this show, what do you hope they take away? What's the experience? Well, it will be it will be different for each person, I think. But um, I mean, I think just on a general level, if we can um, if we can lighten someone's heart and and allow them for two hours and forty minutes to uh, to follow us into this world and and be moved by the music and uh, brought to tears emotionally and with laughter, then I think we've really succeeded. And my final question, and I'm speaking as a fan myself, what are we going to see in the new season of Silicon Valley? Well, I have to say, they're using Russ, I think, smartly, like a very fine, pungent herb. Um, a little goes a long way. So, uh, uh, But the season really does track some new beginnings for Richard and the gang. And I think it's, I think it's their best season yet. Awesome, man. Everyone make sure to check out Christy Mentopoulos and Broadway's hit show, Waitress.